Okay, next we have Ann Larrabee, MSU professor, writer, feminist historian. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Historians usually don't get that kind of reception. <laughs> Uh, it's wonderful to see you all out here. Just really terrific. I myself am freezing, so <laughs> uh, it's it's great to see you. And um, uh, I've been asked to uh, do a bit of reflecting on history and the history of the women's rights movement. Um, uh, I study social movements, and I can tell you that the women's rights movement in this country has been our greatest success. One of our greatest success stories. We. I want to. I want to give you heart. <laughs> There go my notes. <laughs> That's okay. I didn't really need them anyway. Uh, <laughs> I want to give you heart uh, that uh, that that we have had success, and we have had success for over 160 years. Um, thank you. <laughs> I want to take you back, way back. Uh, to 1848, uh, the first women's rights convention. I know that this is deep history, but I want to show you that uh, you are you are not just a moment. You are part of a much larger, larger uh, strand of history. We are not just this moment. You are not just this moment. Uh, this is part of a struggle that's been going on for over 160 years. So at that first women's rights convention, convention in 1848, uh, there were only 300 people there. It took place in Seneca Falls, New York. So I could tell you that a small number can make big, big change. Uh, there were about 260 women and 40 men. And they got together, and uh, it wasn't just about the vote. It was about a whole host of issues that were affecting women at the time. Now then, they had to have a man run the meeting because women were afraid to run a meeting and they were afraid to speak publicly. So uh, think of that and how far we have come. So I just want to um, share with you uh, some of the things that they were fighting for and to uh, have you reflect on how we are still fighting for some of these things today. Okay, for one thing, women could not vote. They couldn't, they couldn't cast their ballot. Um, and that was a very central issue for them. If they were married, they could not own property. Uh, they could only own property if they were single. Uh, they were considered to be pro the property of their husbands or their slave owners. Um, they had extreme difficulty obtaining divorces. And if they did obtain a divorce, they generally did not get custody of their children because their, con their children were considered to be property of their husbands. They did backbreaking labor in the fields, uh, in the factories, and in the households, uh, but their work was not valued. Um, and they couldn't enter the professions. And we are still not equally represented in the professions. These are all things that they were talking about 160 years ago today. They could not gain a higher education, so they couldn't attend Michigan State University. Um, they were excluded from the ministry and the priesthood. Um, and there was a different code of morals for men and women. Uh, so I just want to read something from their Declaration of Sentiments. Man has usurped the prerogative of Jehovah himself, claiming at his, it as his right to assign for women a sphere of action when that belongs to her conscience and her God. He has endeavored in every way that he could to destroy her confidence in her own powers, to lessen her self-respect, and make her willing to lead a dependent and abject life. So in the last 160 years, you can reflect on the gains that we've made. We can vote. We can attend. Yes. Although, you know, you hear that we're still having some problems with that, right? Uh, we can attend institutions of higher learning. We can enter the professions. We can own property. We can more easily obtain divorces and gain custody of our children. So our lives are substantially different. And yet, we can see that as of late, we still have much work to do. So I just want to go over some of those uh, issues that are still resonant for us today. Equal representation. Um, the 19th Amendment was passed in 1920. Um, and we can exercise the right to vote, but we still don't have equal representation in the highest offices, nor are we represented in committees that discuss our own health issues. 
We are still not able to become ministers and priests in most churches. And, and thus to have a respected public voice and moral debates regarding our own bodies and lives. We're still, and I'm astonished that we're still fighting this battle over contraception. I never thought that I would see this myself, that this would still be, uh, that this would still be raised in our time. The first clinic to give women access to contra contraception was opened in 1916. Uh, Margaret Sanger was arrested for opening that clinic uh, to disseminate uh, information about contraception. And even as late as the 1960s, there were some states that did not allow contraception and did not even allow women to talk about contraception. The pill, when it was introduced, it had to be uh, introduced as a as a uh, uh, cure for some kind of uh, women's health complaints because they couldn't disseminate information that it was a, contra it was a form of contraception. And yet still, uh, we're fighting this, this fight today. Um, we just uh, saw the controversy over the Violence Against Women Act, which was first passed in 1994. We're still, it was astonishing that there was any kind of uh, oppo opposition to that act. Uh, <laughs> exactly, yes. Oh my gosh. Uh, we're still fighting for equal pay for equal work. Uh, the Women's Bureau of the Department of Labor was formed in 1920. That was in the same year that we gained the vote, and we are still fighting that fight. And we will keep fighting. And, you know, I would like to actually see the ERA pass still. And let me, <laughs> and let me just remind you of the, of the simple language of that bill, equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. Let us see that passed. <laughs> so are we there yet? No. No. But our movement has, an un, has overturned centuries of oppression, and we can keep going. And uh, I, wanna, I just want to read you one more thing from the Declaration of Sentiments. In entering upon the great work before us, we anticipate no small amount of misconception, misrepresentation, and ridicule, but we shall use every instrumentality within our power to affect our object. So let us affect our object. Let's keep fighting these fights. And as I said, we are part not only of our own moment, but of a much larger stream of history. Thank you.